Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. Or good afternoon, I should say. Hello, hello. Hi, Eric. How are you? I'm great. I'm going to be the uh, the ominous voice in the background. <laughs> so everyone can really focus on where we are. Is that okay? That's perfect. But now I'm horrible. I'm so glad you're there, though, because I'm horrible with navigation. So you got to tell us where <laughs> we are. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, welcome, everyone. It is October 11th, which is a significant day for a lot of reasons. We're in the middle of LGBT History Month. Uh, the 11th is National Coming Out Day, and so it is. There's a lot of there's a lot of um, great accounts to be following today, and we hope also another reason to be celebrating LGBT history to, today is that October 11th is the anniversary of the passing of Frank. That Queen's <laughs> traffic. It is the anniversary of the passing of Frank Kameny, who. Uh, Eric, you know probably better than just about anybody else, was a pioneer of uh, the gay rights movement. And we are here in the Richmond Hill neighborhood of Queens on 115th Street because we are going to pay a visit to his childhood home, which is right there. Okay, right. there it is. So while Wonderful. I slowly make my way there, would you mind just telling folks who are watching today uh, who was Frank Kameny and why we remember him and why he factors so importantly into the history of, L of LGBT rights. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm such a huge fan of uh, the NYC LGBT Sites Project um, and, and all the work you do to commemorate these places because honestly, you know, without um, doing the work of, of locating and mapping where these places are, I think so many people would forget. So I'm such a big fan. Um, so yes, I will pretend like I'm with you. Um, <laughs> for people <laughs> for people who don't know who Frank Kameny was, a lot of people refer to him as the grandfather of the modern gay rights movement. One of the grandfathers, there are a few, including grandmothers like Barbara Giddings. But he was really at the forefront of creating what we now celebrate each and every June uh, uh, with Gay Pride. Mm -hmm. And one of his biggest contributions, I'll kind of cut to the chase, one of his biggest contributions was developing the phrase gay is good. Uh, before Frank Kameny, before the Mattachine Society of Washington and allies like Barbara Giddings, Kayla who's in, people like that, uh, there was really more of a push towards fitting in, towards mm -hmm. assimilating. Uh, and that was especially true uh, throughout the late 1950s until Frank Kameny comes along. But I always like to introduce Frank Kameny not as the grandfather of, of the gay rights movement, but rather as an astronomer, because that's yeah. how it started. And so we are in Richmond Hill, so we're going to rewind all the way back to 1925 when Frank Kameny was born. Um, tell me, maybe you can tell me, what does the, the neighborhood look like now? What What's kind of the, is it more commercial, residential? It looks pretty much. So we're, so at the very end of the street, so I'm looking, I believe I'm looking south, uh, is the elevated uh, subway line. Frank's childhood residence is this one right here. There it this is. One. Uh, it's, it's quite residential. I mean, this mm -hmm. is definitely a residential neighborhood block after block, a lot of just really modest homes. Mm -hmm. And it's, I don't know uh, in terms of the, the composition of the neighborhood in Frank's day, but it seems to be a really diverse neighborhood today. Yeah, it was a super diverse neighborhood. I'm less sure about the, the demographics now, but when he was growing up in the Great Depression, it was German and Irish. Mm -hmm. um, and so, of course, he, he came from a Jewish family. So, yeah, it was pretty diverse uh, then, as I'm sure it is now. Uh, and you can see it's a really beautiful house. I mean, his, his parents were, were, you know, pretty securely placed in uh, the middle class, maybe upper middle class. His father uh, was an immigrant from Poland. Uh, mm -hmm. His name was Emil. He was an electrical engineer. Um, he didn't really get along with his father as much as his mother, who I'm actually kind of obsessed with. 
Um, <laughs> her name was Ray Beck Kameny. She was actually a very, very um, powerful secretary within one of the largest law firms in New York City. Um, well before Frank was around or his sister was around or she was married, um, she was really had a powerful job, um, which she actually continued even after the kids were born, um, I believe once, you know, they were a little bit older. And so Frank Kameny is born in 1925. And his parents realized pretty quickly that they have on their hands this extremely precocious, um, <laughs> very intelligent child um, who teaches himself how to read by the age of four. And then quickly realizes by reading a children's encyclopedia that his grandmother gave him, he realizes that he wants to become an astronomer mm. at the age of six. So he, <laughs> he decides um, simply by, by reading and narrowing down what his professions could be. He Decisive decides and determined a... right from the beginning. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, he becomes really preoccupied with studying space and his, he doesn't have many friends. His mom gets him a, 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 a telescope. And, you know, there's an amazing interview with her where, you know, uh, uh, the historian David Johnson asks, oh, did he, did he have friends? And he's like, oh, she goes, oh, I don't recall. <laughs> I don't recall <laughs> that. I don't recall him having friends. <laughs> and so, um, you know, at the same time as he gets through puberty, he's starting to realize, and I thought we could kind of focus since it is uh, coming out day, focus on his coming out story because it actually took quite a long time. And I think it goes to show that, you know, you don't have to come out immediately. It can be a long process and that's okay. And there's still plenty of time to make a difference in the world because it is such a political act. Mm -hmm. And he didn't come out uh, until after uh, he went to high school, after he went uh, to war, uh, he was on the front lines at, in uh, World War II. Uh, then he came back and goes to college and then uh, to grad school at Harvard. Uh, and this was where he, sorry to interrupt, this, he, this is the house where Frank lived with his family that mm -hmm. entire time up to leaving for Harvard, with the exception of his three years in the army when he was deployed. Right, right, exactly. And so this is, this is the, the house where he started realizing a lot about his own sexuality and is about also the way he would put it about his nonconformity. Because as he was trying to figure out, and you have to remember, um, it, it's a very good uh, uh, comment by Scribble Scribe, he compartmentalized his sexuality because of his intellectual personality. And that's exactly what happened, is he was able to say, you know, this part of my sexuality, I may be having these, you know, feelings or thoughts about other men. Um, this, at first he thought it was a phase. But then he said, wait a second, you know, everyone in the world is telling me that, that this is wrong. I'm not ready to announce it to my family yet. I'm not ready uh -huh. to tell, you know, uh, uh, the rest of the world. But I can make the judgment for myself that society's wrong. And that was yeah. probably the biggest jump that he made inside that house was right. realizing, you know, when he says it, and even his mother in interviews would say it. Um, you know, if society and I differ on something, well, it's up to society <laughs> to catch up to me. Yeah. Right? And it was that realization and that mantra that really guided him for the rest of his life. And so I, don't, I, I we could speak for hours about this. I know you, you probably <laughs> want to get the rest of your day going. But long story short, um, he becomes an astronomer at the height of the space race. You could not have been a better time to be an astronomer. He, he accomplishes his dreams um, is working for the army map service, the government finds out he was gay. Mm -hmm. And the government was the one that pushed him out of the closet, at least in the modern sense. Because you have to remember, coming out in the 50s and the 60s really meant coming out into the gay world. Right. right. It didn't really mean coming out like we think of it, like announcing yourself on television. It meant coming you know, out into this world and so he did that first, and it wasn't for several years, I believe more than a decade, until he came out to his parents 
um, yes. in, in the modern sense. So there were different, you know, different levels of coming out that totally worked for him. And this is someone who invented what we now consider uh, gay pride. So, you know, it's, it, it just goes to show, don't let anyone define what coming out is. Um, right. You can do it on your own terms and you can do it in a strategic way um, because of course it is a political process and we can thank Frank Kameny for fighting back against the government and mm -hmm. forming a lot of these organizations mm -hmm. and ideologies that we now can benefit from. Mm -hmm. um, and as you mentioned, uh, in a really poetic ending, he passed away in 2011 at the age of 86 um, on National Coming Out Day. Um, and so it really is a beautiful story. Um, for someone asking, his name's Frank Kameny. Um, I read him about, uh, about him in the book. There's a lot of other great books um, about him um, and so many amazing sites that you can study if you're in New York or you're visiting. You can create your own tour of some of these LGBT sites, because you know what, not, it's up to us, right? So go yeah. and see them and, and, and um, Christiana, did you, you mentioned some other locations that are, that are nearby. I sure um, did. Oh, I sure did. There they are. <laughs> <laughs> she comes there they are. <laughs> that is beautiful. I wanna, I'm gonna take a screenshot. That's so good. <laughs> How do I do this? That's so great. So these are all in Queens. Um, so you have, let's see, oh, wow. So uh, the Kitty Genovese residence, um, the Bum Bum Bar, which I have not visited. You mentioned it was one of the last. Um, it's actually so. Yep, it, it actually it we pronounce it's pronounced Boom Boom. Oh. Um, and unfortunately, <laughs> it uh, has closed. It closed, I believe, oh. it's on our website. I want to say it was either 2018 or 2019. And when the Boom Boom Bar closed, the number of L or sorry, the number of lesbian bars in New York City, if you can believe it, dropped down to just three remaining. Wow. So these really important social spaces are we're losing them. So it's important for us, right. just like the Kameny residents here, to be aware of these physical spaces and to talk about them, to 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 educate others about them so that they can be preserved. Right. Right. And let's see, my, the one that, you know, I probably would love to go to is, is someone who, who was influenced by Frank, but also influenced him was Morty Manford mm -hmm. and, and uh, the family residents, because his entire family was iconic, especially his mother, yeah. um, who went on to found uh, P-Flag, or was one of the founders of, of P-Flag parents uh, uh, of, of gay, lesbian, and queer children. And so uh, there are so many sites to, to commemorate uh, people like Frank Kameny, like Morty Manford, especially those who were taken too soon from the AIDS crisis. Uh, uh, there are so many legacies that, that it's our jobs uh, to remember them and thank, thank God for N uh, NYC LGBT sites um, for making it easy for us um, because this is so cool that I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles right now and I'm <laughs> able to pay homage to Frank um, virtually. I'm so curious who lives there now. Uh <laughs> Can't help it. Can't help it. No, we, we're so fortunate. You're right. With 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 uh, social media and the interwebs and technology, we're so fortunate to be able to connect you, who know so much about Frank and this this um, history, to this physical site. You know, these physical sites give us real visceral connections mm -hmm. to this important history. So to pair the two together like this day is really special for us. So we really appreciate it, Eric. I'm. I, it's such an honor. I'm such a fan. I've been a fan for such a long time. If people want to support y'all. What should mm. they do? Please go to nyclgbtsites.org, especially if you donate now during LGBT History Month. Uh, donations uh, over a certain uh, amount, I believe it's $50, receive our uh, gay t-shirt, which is inspired by the artwork for, from the initial uh, Christopher Street Liberation Day March. Oh, how so cool. head to, Yeah, they're great. So head to the website, nyclgbtsites.org. That is so perfect. Um, well, I will let you get on with your day, but thank you so much for including me on this. And look at those beautiful flowers. I, I'm so <laughs> glad that I was able to, to commemorate, I think so many people um, you know, wish they could be taking part in some of these sites, but until mm -hmm. we can travel again, until we can you know, go, go to Julius's and, and yep. be there, um, we got to do it virtually and y'all are making it possible. So I cannot thank you enough. Um, and also for schlepping down to Queens to, to, yeah. to show us um, 
Frank's world. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you again so much, Eric. Enjoy the rest of your, your West Coast morning. <laughs> you too. Happy National Coming Out Day. Same to you. And thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Bye, y'all. Bye. <laughs>